After Robert F. Kennedy Jr. spoiled Donald Trump's 2024 re-election bid, with Kennedy openly playing with the idea of an independent run, one insider with his campaign told Mediaite this week, quote, this is going to F Trump. Bobby's values are much more in line with patriots. He's against Big Pharma. He's pro-Bitcoin. He wants to decentralize so the government can control it. CNN's David Axelrod spoke out on the possibility of Kennedy could sink Trump's campaign. Let's watch. I think anything that lowers the threshold, lowers the ceiling, uh, helps Donald Trump. I think he has a ceiling. And uh, so if he, knew, if he needs fewer votes uh, to win, that, that, that helps him. Biden tends to do better among people who, who have a negative view uh, of both of them and probably benefits from a binary uh, race. But just a point on, uh, on Bobby Kennedy Jr. He says the system was rigged against him. He had a approval rating among Democrats of 14 positive, 57 negative. So there isn't a system you could devise that would have yielded Bobby Kennedy Jr. as the nominee of the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, he's getting out because he wants to stay. He likes the attention. He wants to stay in the race. Even his own internal polling, he's not, uh, he's not really a factor to win the race. He's only a factor to hang around and continue to get attention, which is what he wants. Now, polling from a pro-Kennedy super PAC found that in a general election between Trump, Biden, and a generic independent candidate, the result is Trump at 40 percent, Biden at 38 percent, and the independent candidate at 17 percent. And a matchup between Biden, Trump, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as the independent candidate, the result is Trump and Biden tied at 38 percent, with Kennedy at 19 percent. The survey did not include Green Party candidate Cornell West. However, another poll from Echelon Insights finds an independent RFK Jr. would increase Donald Trump's margin over Joe Biden by one point. Tony Lyons, president of Skyhorse Publishing and co-founder of the American Values 2024 Super PAC, is here with us now to discuss. Welcome. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Okay, so the top line here is that RFK Jr. specifically, as opposed to an independent, seems to be drawing more votes from uh, Donald Trump than from uh, Joe Biden. Do you think that's going to have implications for how his own polling fares going into uh, the months following his prospective announcement that he's going to be running third party? He's gotten a lot of favorable press from conservative media. Is that going to continue if he's perceived to be a spoiler for Trump as opposed to a spoiler for Biden? Yeah, so I don't think that Bobby Kennedy is a spoiler for anybody. I think he's a viable candidate and I think he can win. And I think that if you look at the polls that, that we've been doing, you see that Bobby Kennedy is at 19% nationally in a three-way race and that, you know, Biden and Trump have 38% each. But that is after, you know, one of the most incredible propaganda uh, campaigns in the history of U.S. politics, where they have done everything they can to shut down Bobby Kennedy's campaign and his numbers keep going up. So the numbers that you cited before don't correlate to the numbers that we got in our latest poll. So in our latest poll of Democrats, we got 27 percent. So Bobby Kennedy's number, even with Democrats, has been going up. So the only reason he would be pulling out and running as a third party candidate is because they won't actually let him be their candidate. So they won't let Democratic voters, you know, have their fair say. So. Democrats have said time and time again in polls, you know, 80 percent of Democrats want Bobby Kennedy to be able to debate Biden and the DNC won't let them do that. So Democrats want the opportunity to choose their own candidate. And I believe that many of them will choose Bobby in a three way race. I mean, so so th that's a really good good point, Tony, in terms of Democratic voters wanting to see an open and fair process. But most of them will still vote for Joe Biden anyway. So the people who are watching this program, make the case for Bobby Kennedy's viability. If someone's watching this and, and they're thinking, I want somebody else, why should Bobby be a part of that consideration? Yeah, so I would ask this question. I would say, what if everything you've read about Bobby Kennedy is not true? What if it's a lie? What if you've been subjected to an incredible propaganda campaign? And what if Bobby Kennedy really is this kind of folk hero who's going to heal this divided country? 
in a way that we know neither Biden nor Trump can do. Um, you know, would the DNC back him then? Would the RNC back him then? No, they are backing their corrupt corporate sponsors. And what they want is to raise more money, to get more power, but they've shown that they don't care what the impact on the people of this country are. I mean, many uh, candidates have their own pollsters, so I don't mean to cast any aspersions, but I do think that people are going to have some questions uh, about the methodology, the sample size, et cetera, of the polls that you've done, especially since they are more favorable to RFK Jr. than some of the other polls that are out there. So could you speak to um, the credibility of the polls that you've done specifically? I think the sample size uh, and who was sampled are probably the most uh, crucial factors there. Yeah, so this was a Zogby poll. They've, they've been polling for many, many years. They're a very well-respected polling company. And, you know, the sample size, I believe, was something like a 1,000. Uh, but it, it's very well done. It's very professional. And so I think that what you're going to hear from the DNC and from the RNC is, you know, all kinds of stories that are just the same kinds of stories that you heard before, which is that he's not a credible candidate. And, you know, the, or, or that he's dangerous. So when you think about Bobby Kennedy, you should think about why they think he's dangerous. And I would say he may be the most dangerous politician in U.S. history in the sense that if you're a corrupt public health official or if you're a corrupt politician who isn't looking out for the welfare of the people of this country, he is going to be very, very dangerous to you. So he is really going to change things. Donald Trump talks about draining the, the uh, swamp. He has said time after time that he's going to do that. But Bobby Kennedy as president, he will go in there and he will change the way that the government agencies work. He will not allow them. You know, the FDA now takes 75 percent of their budget from the companies that they're supposed to be regulating. Bobby Kennedy would end that on day one. He just would not allow that kind of corruption to continue. So, Tony, I, I want to go back here, though, and just talk about the electoral possibilities here. Now, Democrats, uh, President Biden are making the case that he is the only person who is best positioned to beat Donald Trump. Why does Bobby Kennedy, and, and I've seen in interviews, Bobby said, heck, I am a Democrat. I'm a traditional Democrat. I come from a family of a long line of Democrats. Why should Democrats consider Bobby over Biden if they're principally concerned with wanting to defeat the Republican, whether it's Trump or someone else? So I think that the DNC, you know, at their core, wants to continue the corporate gravy train that they've been part of for decades now. And that when, you know, that they would rather lose with Biden than win with Bobby Kennedy. And that Biden is just not a good candidate, that nobody can see him talking now and think this is a candidate that I'm happy with. So they don't love Biden as a candidate. They don't want Biden as their candidate. But they know that Bobby Kennedy will not allow this corruption to continue. And the DNC and the RNC are these entrenched groups that want to keep things as they are. And Bobby Kennedy is an outsider who will change them. And I think that what you're going to see is that voters on the right and the left, deep down, they're tired of it. 50% in our polling, 50% of the people polled wanted the opportunity to look at a third party candidate, that they really want the opportunity to, you know, like I said before, have a free, fair and open election process. And, you know, that's what this country is demanding now. And I think Bobby Kennedy is going to give it to them. And when they really hear him talk, when they hear what he really believes and what he would really do as president, they're going to vote for him. And it's going to be a lot of people on the right, a lot of people on the left, because he represents a unity party for what this country needs right now. I strongly agree with the need for diversification uh, and people breaking out of our two-party uh, system. And I do think that part of why a candidacy like, let's say, Bernie Sanders as an independent from Vermont had so much traction was in part because of the transparency of his fundraising and the fact that uh, all of the money was from uh, small, small dollar donors. He rejected all billionaire funding. RFK Jr. hasn't been as transparent. And I wondered if you could speak to the donor base and the super PAC and to speak to voters who might be concerned that 
uh, for all that he is talking about being independent and unshackled from some of the corruption that he speaks so passionately and persuasively about, um, without knowing who's actually funding his campaign more specifically, uh, they might have some insecurity about how true those statements are. Can you speak to that as, as the head of the, this major super PAC? Sure. Uh, we, we intend to start running uh, advertisements nationally to try to get small donors. We have not yet gotten small donors. So, so we've gotten a small number of very large donors on the right and on the left. That's, you know, public information. It's right down the middle. So, so far it's been, um, you know, a, a very difficult process to get started. And it's amazing that we've done so well, that we've raised so much money. So that the total that we've raised so far is uh, $16.5 million. And we believe that, you know, after next week, if it goes how I think it's going to go, we will raise five or six million dollars in that next week. So I think that there are a lot of donors out there who did not believe that the DNC was going to run a fair primary process and that Bobby Kennedy didn't have a real chance. Now I think they're going to see from the polling and from the statements that he makes that contradict the lies that have been told time after time, that they're going to see he's a sincere candidate and he can win. And Tony, I mean, it, it, it costs a lot of money to, to run for president. And, and I think a lot of people understand that. Now, we clearly need to take some of the money out of politics and make it more about the people. And I would presume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, that, that Bobby Kennedy, if he were to be elected, would want to be a champion of that position, but in order to get there, you need the money first. I mean, I, so, so can, can you just sort of explain to people who are wondering, well, why so many mega donors and not small dollars yet coming in? Ex explain your strategy and how you're trying to approach this. Yeah, yeah, so at this point, I think that Bobby becoming president is such an important thing, that we are at this turning point in U.S. history, that the corruption in our government has become overwhelming. And that, I mean, it, it really is an incredible moment where the most powerful, the richest country on the planet is sending hundreds of billions of dollars all around the world, is protecting and bailing out, you know, multi-billion dollar corporations, yet 57% of the people in this country don't have $1,000 in the bank. So we need somebody who's going to fight for the American people. And Bobby Kennedy is going to do that. And we will take money wherever we can get it until Bobby becomes president. And then he will change the corrupt rules that allow all of these donors to donate so, so much money that, are now, that, that let lobbyists control Washington and hopefully have a new system where we can have real, honest government. And that's what Bobby Kennedy represents. He is an honest Democrat. And I would almost think that you could look at his new campaign as an honest Democratic campaign, because many of the values that the DNC used to have, they no longer have. And he still has those values. Tony, I, I do think that if you're willing to, quote, take money from wherever you can get it, there are some concerns that the exact money corruption spiral that he has been describing, again, I think very compellingly from the campaign trail, is inevitably going to affect his own policies. And some people have looked at the incongruity of his policy with respect to Israel-Palestine and the rest of his anti-imperial message as potentially evidence of exactly how money has already affected his campaign. Yeah, so, you know, you, you, you should look separately at the campaign from the PAC. So, the, the money Bobby's getting for his campaign is from small donors. It's only from small donors. The super PAC is a totally different entity. So it has nothing to do with that. But it, it is also a question of, you know, how do you get a super PAC that can have some power, that can have some impact when you're up against PACs that have 10 times or 20 times the money we have, maybe even 50 times. So, you know, we are running a, a, a bare, you know, sort of like a grassroots organization. We've hired 70 people. We're employing people all around the country to get Bobby's message out and to counter the lies and the propaganda that have misled the public to believe that he's somebody who he isn't and that he believes things that he doesn't and that he would do things that he certainly won't do. So we want people to know what he's actually going to do as president. And what he's going to do is he's going to get rid of the corruption in Washington. And I do believe 
that we need to get there right now by any means necessary. All right, Tony Lyons, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.